All right, we're here. It's time to talk about the amazing Spider-Man duology. Mark Webb, oh Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone. Uh, all right. This has been a long time coming. <laughs> I don't know if I'm mentally prepared for this conversation. Where are we at? Well, let's go. It's let's time. Go. It's time. Let's start with the amazing Spider-Man. As always, we start at the beginning. All right. What do we think about this one, Ben? I still like it. I think it's it's a fun it's a fun Spider-Man movie. I noticed a lot of I've noticed a lot of like teenage angst in this in this movie. Like uh, definitely a lot of teenage angst because I it's definitely after watching the the um, Raimi slash McGuire films, the angst the teenage angst and awkwardness in this movie is just like dialed up to eleven. Being far enough away from it now, you really feel the Twilight and Dark Knight era influence on this movie. Oh, yeah. you, you you definitely do, but um, there's still there's a lot of really good Spider Man moments in this, and I also like going to the end of the movie. I know once we get there, we get there, but I like Spider Man saved a guy's kid, and they're like and in the city of New York, people of the city band together to help Spider Man out. So, I mean, all, all in all, I still had a fun time with this movie. Don't we really mess have with one of us. We mess with all of us. Sparks. Uh, this film was darker, and I do mean like literally, physically, visually darker than I remember it being. Uh, like just so much dark shadows. Lots of filming black, at night. And I was like, hmm, that was a choice. Uh, and and being further removed, I, that choice works less and less for me. Uh, it's it's. All right, it's got good things. It's it's also got some messy shit that just doesn't hold up. Ryan, it's my least favorite Spider-Man movie. Interesting. Yeah, it's my third favorite. I'm I'm extremely happy for you. Uh, I really like this movie. I think it's tight as hell. Uh, it moves at a clip. I really enjoy Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. Um, so there's my highlight for both of these movies. I want to get like a blanket. Like for me. The CGI uh, and the web swinging in both of these movies are why I have a hard time with Tom Hall and Spider-Man. <laughs> I think sure. they're both incredible in both of these movies, the CGI and the web swinging choreography. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. It, um, yeah. They're, they're my favorite interpretations of the web swinging stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing about definitely about the, the Garfield films, I want to say over the McGuire ones is that, you really get the like the, the, the spiders this is just I don't know how to really put this in the words right but like Brandon when Hugh said when he's swinging through New York City it looks really good like you get like his arms and his like legs doing the the, the spider thing that you see in the comics his well legs I was mostly I out. was mostly talking about there's a lot of moments where you see he like he like does the swing and like they always remember to do like the red light in the in the first film um mm -hmm. he like does the does the web and then you see him like climb up it a little bit so he doesn't like so he makes the right turn mm -hmm. um there's a lot of stuff where he's like constantly working on like okay I need to turn here sharp so I'll do that and like I thought I thought all of that was like really well thought out and really mm -hmm. and looks really cool. The web yeah. swinging, I will just definitely say the web swinging in this movie is really good. Yeah, like uh, because yeah. like when you, when you have the first the Raimi movies, like nobody's done web swinging before, so how do you do it? And then you have your base, and you're like, okay, how do we improve on that? And uh, I would agree that like the the Amazing Spider-Man movies have the best uh, uh, web swinging stuff, like the little of, of like the cartridge. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a great little touch that like you know. Mm -hmm. uh, is definitely missing, I think, in the in the new movies for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like the CGI on the suit, like they 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 don't make the suit so form fitting that you don't see like wrinkles in it, and it makes the suit which it isn't all CGI, uh, but and oftentimes when it is CGI, you you see like the folds in it, and it doesn't, and if, you see like wrinkle when he moves his arm, so it it's gives the impression that it's it's a real physical thing. Yeah, it's definitely much more apparent in the second movie. It is definitely looser in yeah. the second one. I. Cannot tell you how much I hate the suit in this movie. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, again, the movie itself is dark, but the suit is dark. The glasses, like the weird Oakleys are like, uh, uh, like having a different spider suit's fine, but like he has like evil, evil like Vegeta eyes as, as his eyes. And I'm just like, he looks like an evil superior Spider Man to me. Um, I will. I'm just trying to think of things I want to say before I get negative. Um, yeah, I will definitely say I like the suit in the second movie a lot more than the first one. Because the first oh, 100%. one, like, that, I, hey. when I was first watching this, this, when I was watching the first movie, I was like, you know, I kind of enjoy this because I watched these movies back to back, and I was like, you know, I kind of at first I'm like, yeah, I remember enjoying the suit. Then the more I look, I was like, you know, it doesn't still really feel like 
I, mean, it's I, I, I will admit I will admit to really enjoying the design of the suit, but I'll concede that yes, the decision to make it dark on black is was not a good one. Yeah. Like I like how they try to change the color schemes, especially with like the hands. It's not like the full like the red and the blue, but it kind of, it's a mix a mixture a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then you see the spider logo. It's kind of hard to see the spider logo, and I just love a big bold spider logo. Like like um, the thing that this movie is so dark, y'all. Like the like the, the 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 main like trailer shot of the movie where Spider Man's like in front of the moon, going Shh, you can't see him. He's he's just a blob in front of the moon. Like wow, this is the best shot. Like there is not. A single I shot. Saw, I saw him. Like I see him clear as day in that scene. Clear as day. In the in the moon sequence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, may, maybe, maybe I have bad vision. Um, I found just the cinematography in this first one, especially compared to the second one. Just like the choice to shoot all of it at night is is just like. I get they wanted to do like the spider thing, I guess, but like I just found all the action scenes to be kind of like messy and dark and like it's just not like. I don't the best, know, like the best action scene is in is, the is in, in the school in the light when it's in the it. daylight. Yeah, yeah. 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 You do yeah, get. I, know, I do have to admit, one of my favorite Stanley cameos is the one for him in the library where oh, he's I, sure. fighting in the background. I think it is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I also really like that sequence. Um, I'll I'll agree with like the the fight sequences at night aren't the well aren't 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 well done very well, but I do think that there's a lot of moments with like Gwen and Peter. Um that are darkly lit and they're, and they're together. I think those are really dynamic and well shot. Um, I really enjoy the chemistry that Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker have in this movie. Um, They uh, really work for me on on a level that like elevates this movie for me. I, I agree. I would say that about both. Uh, I think Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield's chemistry carries the film for the Mm -hmm. first one. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe even for the second one, but uh, a little less so I'd say, but for the first one, for sure. Um, I disagree yeah, I, about about it about the pacing and the moving at a clip because it takes us almost an hour before Ben dies in this movie. Um, I think the first half of the movie is is structured very weird, and they didn't want to do the same thing as the first Spider Man movie, and I get that. But like having all this set up, and then halfway in the movie, that's when Ben dies. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's I think it's in the wrong place for the movie. I really do. I don't think I think you you don't spend enough time with Ben first of all. So when he dies it matters. Second, I think the death of Ben is incredibly poorly done. It's executed really poorly. Um I think I I I like Sally Field a lot in this movie. I I think for the amount of time it took for them to get to that moment, they should have been in the movie more, I think. Hmm. Sparks, do we we did you have anything more to add? Um, I, I kind of agree. I feel like Sal- Sally Fields, unfortunately, is like trying very hard with material that's not doing a lot for her. Um, the, the script is not strong uh, for her or for certain characters. I think Martin Sheen gets more uh, more and better material. He's got good um, banter. Yeah, he's got he's got real good like t- chewing, taking the sh- piss out of Peter uh, with things like he's got you on his computer. Um, mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm there's a lot of good there's a good foundational relationship thing there um i just i i kind of lean towards that i i think that the execution of ben needed to be better but even more than that uh the execution of the execution of ben i think like, he definitely um, got executed no no uh but the the um the thing for me is that i don't think that the core point of the movie is executed well now that i'm i'm this many years out from it and watched it again of peter hunting down uh (laughs) the criminals and looking for the guy that shot uncle ben and then like one night the lizard attacks people and he has to save a kid and then he goes oh i need to be better i guess i'll stop looking for that guy now and i'll never ever bring it up again yep the end of my vendetta i no longer wish to kill Yay. Um, I don't think that's done the best. Um, and part of it that bothers me is that it all happens around the same night of him going and seeing Gwen's dad. And what irks me is that there's this part where Captain Stacy talks about um, if I wanted the the low-level like uh, off, criminal off the off street, the street mm-hmm. then he would be. And I'm like, okay, so there's a lot of things here. Either Gwen didn't tell her dad what happened to peter's uncle 
or she did and he doesn't care or like it, it and then peter doesn't even bring it up in reference of like wait so, like, my uncle got shot by a carjacker, so you're saying you wanted that carjacker on the street to shoot my uncle? Like, it is so right there that this should be part of the conversation, and it never comes up. It's And it's, it's not part of him going through that evolutional moment at all, and it's so... It baffles like, me. Like, the, the whole script forgets that that's what Peter's going through right now, that that's what we've been watching Peter go through for a half hour at that point in the movie. Because they just want to have the discussion where Peter's like, I think Spider-Man's doing something pretty cool. And he's like, oh, yeah, you think Spider-Man? Like, Again, it's the Dark Knight scene of like, oh, I think Batman's doing a good. Like, the, 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 that scene bothers me so much because that is the exact moment that Peter should express like, hey, my uncle was shot and you didn't, guys didn't do anything about it. Right. That's the moment. But instead, mm. freaking Dennis literally has me agreeing with a cop, which is something I never want to do. But Dennis is like, wow, you actually ruined my six month operations thing because you want to try to be a hero. Good job, Spider-Man. And like. He's right. Not even be a hero. Not even be a hero. You're just going out and looking for like one particular dude. Yes. And like that's the only way that that even circles into the conversation. But again, like it's super weird because like why wouldn't Gwen have told her dad what Peter yeah. had recently gone through? Why wouldn't Peter bring it up to throw it back in the captain's that face? That would have like, been some is, good drama. Why are these things not happening? Yeah. You go now. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, well, if you're like here this, to shit on it, like you're allowed to like it. I just, this, I want to know this why because, this was new for me because I watched that movie and I'm like, it is, there is a really good idea, I think, in wanting to do a story that's about Peter, like really being angry and like being a young, angsty teen who has this power now. What will he do with that power? Well, he's going to go and find and potentially murder but at he's least got a little bit of anakin of skywalker in him that's fine right but, but but potentially at least beat the shit out of the man that yeah. killed his uncle um i just want the story to not to actually fully engage with that as a thematic arc and follow through on it rather than be like yeah we're gonna play with that for like 30 minutes and then we're gonna go whoop and never catch it because it'll never come back um and that's and that's like there was a better way to tell this like really angsty teen like coming into his own as being Spider-Man through that story. And I think something that could have been more personal and kind of like kept the lizard on the sideline for a lot more of the film. Um, but, but been a more personal story about Peter Parker overcoming that and recognizing what it means for him to not only be a hero, but live in a way that his uncle would want him to. Uh, and the movie just doesn't get there. Uh, and I think that's a shame. I think it's trying to be a lot of a lot of things at once, and I really wish, which is strangely why I like the second one more now. Like, it it's at least got a tone and a focus it's going for, you know. Um, like, well, I think I, I the 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 first film is very tonally consistent. I think it it's, it it knows exactly what it's trying to do, and I think for the most yeah. part it does it well. I don't agree that the script is bad. I like the script. I think the script is is well structured, and like I said, I think the pacing is great. Um, this movie moves for me. It it the uh. Do you ben like Parker. the parents? Do you like the parent stuff? Yeah, in this movie, I do. It's not done enough. It's done kind of in a way of like it's Batman Begins in this. You know, it's I like Batman Begins a lot, but like you see, like you get just enough to where it's like there's hints of it, but it's not the main focus of Peter's journey. Is what happened to his parents? He just kind of has this desire for a connection yeah, yeah, with yeah. his parents, and so, I I think that works in this movie because it's not dwelled on a lot it's just kind no, of that's, exists. that's fair so my problem with that is it doesn't dwell on it enough for you to really care so you're but are you supposed to care about aunt may and uncle ben who their time is being taken away because you have to focus on the parent stuff so there are two sets of parents that are not being focused on so like it's hard for me to care about either of them because neither of them are getting the full attention that i think that they deserve you know what i mean well, i think aunt may and uncle ben do get the full attention they deserve yeah i like, guess i don't think uh, R richard and, and mary parker's time is is con is consequential to Bay and Ben. I, I that's that's fair. That's fair. I just I think this movie wants to do a little too many things and set up a little too much stuff. Um, that I wish it just would have been a focus. Again, you know, like as I, real quick, I want to I want to add like as an idea, I don't like the Richard and May Parker stuff at all. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I kind of agree with Ryan only in the sense that like, I don't think there's a problem with wanting, like, I think that you prime Peter to be this angsty person. Uh, and when he gets his powers that behave this way really well by having him established as a person who's like missing his parents, like Peter Parker in the Tobey Maguire movies is okay. He's accepted that his parents are, have 
died long ago. They're not in the he's picture. Got his, he's got his uncle and his aunt. And this is a Peter who's like very deeply upset. He feels abandoned by his parents. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's fine. And mm -hmm. that can like build into this arc of this Peter who loses his uncle, feels like he needs to do something about it because he has this power and all that kind of stuff. And there's like, there's, there's good ideas there. It's just that the movie loses interest in chasing them and just decides uh peter saved a kid one time now he's a superhero don't worry about it all right classic spider-man here we go oh, but, I, um, but I, I like that scene on the bridge that the realization like that, that he has the realization that he has that he needs to be doing better for the city i like that scene i don't think it does enough to justify an hour and 10 minutes or so of build up at that point of a particular version of Peter Parker. And it says this one moment has made him a completely different character who now no longer gives a shit about finding the man who shot his uncle. I don't think that's good. I don't think that the script pays off on it. I think the front end of the movie and the back end of the movie are not working with each other. I, don't I, agree with that. I think um, that's fine. You are entitled to that opinion. I think the lizard, I wish the lizard was worse. Because I find him just to be so it, so insanely generic. And like, well, we want to do the Green Goblet again, but have literally no fun with it. Um, and then we're going to add an ADR backtrack of him in the sewer. Because we need the heck, the Jekyll and Hyde thing or else the movie wouldn't work, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I think the lizard sucks. I really do. I think he's boring. I The dynamic between, him, between the uh, uh, Dr. Kirk Connors and Peter is fine. I don't think it's there enough. And then any type of depth that the doctor has is literally gone because he just wants to turn people into lizards um and again yeah. i did i did just watch the three spider-man movies so you know it's hard like i'm not judging them but like you can have a competent and like convincing villain and he doesn't just have to become stupid at the end He's, he just becomes a dumb lizard man and like i guess that's fine if you want to just do his, like his motivations are just not well incorporated into the movie Again, like if you just, want to do the thing where, like, just, I I could save humanity, I will, I like, if you want to really deep dive into that, sure. But, like, it just, it's like Sauron, I want to turn people into dinosaurs. Like, it's, it's like, man, you were, like, the most brilliant man of our time. And then we I got a giant cure. blue thing in the sky, baby. I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. Well, I, okay. Look, look no, he wants to turn people into the lizard because he wants to make the human race stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He That's, thinks he's doing the human race a good thing by turning them all into lizard people. I wish I had a a. <laughs> I guess I just need a better a better w than one line of him going. I want to make the genetic genetic race superior. It is it it is a comic book plot that it, it's a comic book plot, which is fine. But like I'll I am used it, to having a little more depth behind my ideas. I'll I'll put it I'll put it in a way where like. I, I, I do think like it's it's unfortunate because like we're so close to the Raimi films when we just watch them, but like Willem Dafoe's like psych psychopathic episode of changing into the green goblin is very well incorporated into the storytelling like i see where there's a divide and where he's become consumed by this persona of this person and with connor's and the lizard it, it, him behaving in the manner he does like that this idea that he has lost his mind and his sensibilities to this is kind of just very quickly rush through there isn't because, a doc Ock because moment. we just have to we just have to move forward and uh we need to get to him being dangerous and bad rather than like actually explore like he has lost his humanity in the process of this uh in oh. in a direct way i got a positive i like i like dennis leary showing up at the end i yeah. like dennis leary in this movie in yeah. general yeah he's a, he's, a um, good, he's a good foil to spider-man who's not sure what he's doing yeah uh, i like the scene where the lizard saves peter with the hand that's about to crumble mm -hmm. yep. yeah yeah that is a good scene i think yeah. that's, really good I, think scene. that's yeah. I think that's part of my whole thing is that like that implies this sense of humanity that that was existing in him that like we're not given the window into it very well Absolutely. up to that yeah. moment um yeah i love what i i think they did a great job with the practical effects of his uh husk arm when he gets his new arm oh yeah, yeah the cast good. A lot of good, um, yeah. lot of good fake casts in this in this two two movies. Uh, I really like the lizard CGI, um, Me too. especially again in the school specifically. Yeah. Like the way you can see folds in the reptile skin, it looks real good. I honestly don't think it'll look that good in No Way Home, which is a shame because it looks really really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that, yeah. yeah that Marvel seems also is different. Also, I don't think I don't think uh, Reese Ifans is in the movie. I don't think so either. Uh, I think I, he's just. I think it's just 
a, a lizard. lizard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If anything, it's voice work. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah he definitely probably. seems like the least of the Sinister Five. That we or seen. it's Ross Marquand. <laughs> Ross, come in for a minute. <laughs> He's so fucked. Do right? a British accent. <laughs> He's uh, doing Thomas Hayden Church too. Ross Ross Marquand on retainer to voice anyone who doesn't want to step in and play ball. <laughs> He's the live action. Um, God, what the KTUSO? What's the that voice? Oh, name? Alan Tudyk. He's the live action Alan Tudyk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah no, I just I, I think that there's a better idea of like an emotional through line for Peter that I don't think the movie quite commits enough to, to focus on. I think too much uh, real estate is given over to the hunt for uncle Ben's killer for us not to get a more clear. Yes. That's... Uh, Peter coming to, to his recognition of uh, not wanting to be a murderer or yeah. that kind of thing. And like th- they, they do imply like at that point that he will kill him. Uh, and I'm like, you know, he could still catch him. Like, he could still find him and catch him. We don't have to... He doesn't have to kill him anymore. Batman like, does eventually... Be, Batman does can, eventually find Joe Chill. That's what I can, thought. He can, yeah. still, he can still be Spider-Man and catch the guy. Like, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's kind of weird that we don't follow up on that at all. We, we, we really do just drop it. I thought um, it was going to... I thought it was going to show up again in the second movie somehow. Before, like, before I, I saw I, it. Like, I remember the first time I saw it and I thought it was going to be, like, the last one of the last things in the film is that he yeah. catches him and oh. turns him over. Mag has a good point. Both doctors use a MacGuffin machine. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. The, 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 the Galani or the Jelani or the Gelato or whatever the hell that thing was called. Yeah. The Galani. Um, <laughs> we have this MacGuffin machine and we're just going to keep it back here just in case. Just in case. You never know. Yeah. I also... Uh, Grayson's in the chat too. This is going back a while. He was saying, I feel like the Uncle Ben death in the first movie is is thrown in because it's so important to the comics, but there's no major reason in the series. And while he was writing that, Sparks was, of course, talking about that part. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, haha, Grayson, very funny saying that I died and now I'm Zombie Ben. Oh no! Oh, actually, he says Zombo Ben. So still, haha, very funny. Very oh, all right. Um, I want to say something I like about the movie again. Yeah. Um, I really like the scene with Flash uh after uncle ben dies Me too. Yes. That's, in my, that's in my I, positive notes that's a that's a big and important moment that that is one of my highlight moments from this movie is i really like that flash does that yeah yeah and uh i also want to say that i really like james horner's soundtrack to this movie i really like his spider-man theme um i really just like all the music in this movie so much yeah james yeah, horner is great i i know there i saw while i was watching the credits i know they're at, executive producers are just their name only, but I seen Kevin Feige's name as an executive producer. I was like, Hmm, that's interesting. Kevin Feige used to be a producer. Well, I think that's, I think that might be left over from when this was Spider-Man four because Kevin Feige was an executive producer on those Raimi Spider-Man movies. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I, I think that, uh, they went more for outcast, uh, than dork with Peter Parker, which mm-hmm. is where we get, skateboarding peter and i i also agree with ryan like the skateboarding just doesn't work for i'll me. be honest like they they fix his character so much in in spider-man 2 but for me and this is me when i when i read peter parker in the comics or whatever like this is not it not even close not whatsoever i would not look at hot ass tall skinny skateboarder thrasher shirt andrew garfield and go that's my peter parker that's just me but uh, and like the outcast part yes like being a loner, they went for that part, which I get. Um, he doesn't ring t- as as the Peter Parker that I read my entire life, and that's fine. This is a different interpretation. This is the Twilight Dark Knight version. I get that. Uh, Garfield yep. seems to be doing something where he made a physical choice with Peter to have him be somewhere on the spectrum on some level because of the way like he handles objects, how he lays them out, how he uh, Mm. seems to interact the way he stammers, the way he holds himself. Like Garfield seemed to be going for something specific with that, Mm -hmm. which I'm not going to say is a bad choice. It's a choice. Yeah. I really like how he plays the character. That's that's great, but that's awesome. I love it. I definitely saw how Peter was a lot more awkward in this movie or this version of Peter was a lot more awkward, but you're, I agree with Ryan because I'm used to like, like dork, super uber nerdy Peter Parker, which is what McGuire nailed in the very in the first Raimi Spider Man movie. And this one, I mean, yes, you do see him with like when he's talking with his uncle about trying to fix the washer, how their basement got flooded. 
the science we stuff get, I like. I like the science stuff in this. We movie. get a little bit of that, and I'm also mm-hmm. happy to see that there's more science stuff being explored in the second movie. But in this one, just it felt really odd seeing Peter Parker on a skateboard with Coldplay playing, and he's exploring his power <laughs> while he's skateboarding. It's like that just feels that is I mean, a that not, is a a time capsule of like yo yeah. this is 2012 teenagers baby right here uh yeah yeah uh, i i do mean that i like andrew garfield's portrayal by the way brandon i'm not i'm not knocking it oh, of, oh he's a know. good actor i just don't like the choice that they made for the character whatsoever yeah. no i like i don't like the skateboarding but i do yeah. like garfield's choices of how to play peter sure. um well, emma he gets stone, the emma he gets stone the down later Oh, go ahead, um, <laughs> no go go please i'm saying he gets the quips down he gets the quips very he he's very quippy in both movies and i really like that yeah it's too. it's it's it doesn't work for me like i like that he's funny spider-man but he is so like not that character whatsoever before he's spider-man so like when he just turns it on it's like oh i guess you're just being spider-man now which is cool uh, which is why like in the second one he's a little more even tone where he's a little more goofy as peter parker instead of woe is me all the time kind of peter parker mm-hmm. 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 Um, let's see. Uh, you, got, you got notes. Yeah, I'm looking at the notes. Uh, I do like that the connection to his parents through the through the briefcase is what leads him to go to, want to talk to Kirk Connors, mm-hmm. even though he ends up getting to the building and uh, I guess, life. and I guess Gwen has like some really prestigious high school internship to be working at Oscorp, but whatever. Um, and he then immediately forgets why he was there and doesn't talk to Connors. Um, <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah. Um. I do like I do like uh, the chemistry between the two actors. Um, I do like it more in the second one. Um, but yeah, like they 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 are they are they are strong. It helps that. Uh, fun fact: all three of the two leads of the Spider-Man movies have dated. All three of the leads have dated. Yeah. So funny. Yep. Uh, all the chemistry. Yeah, I also really like their chemistry together. I really like the scene where he decides to tell her. Um, I think that's really. Yeah, I like it too. I yeah. like it too. Mm-hmm. Really, inter- really interesting and romantic. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. I like that we just went for it right from the bat. I like the way he does it. I like that scene. It's a good scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and pr- pretty much any scene that's focused on Peter and Gwen, I like. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the other thing is that like sometimes those... The the whole thing of him going to Gwen's house comes at a weird point where like he's still supposed to be in his like murderous rampage through the city. Um, <laughs> and that's that's a little odd and again like it that's why i think that's that dinner scene sits so weird to me that i'm like how does his uncle not come up in this conversation yeah it's like front of the mind entirely for peter so it's really weird and again like i cannot believe that gwen wouldn't tell her dad Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that by the way i'm inviting a boy over his uncle was recently shot by a carjacker like at least two weeks ago (laughs) Uh, not a carjacker in this one it's just, uh, just a he's a convenience right. store thief. No, it's just a convenience dude. Store thief. Yeah, and then he drops his gun and Ben smartly reaches for it. Yeah. I'm like sorry. I'm thinking, of the, I'm thinking of the yeah. car thief, car thief. My bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's because it's all in that scene. It's the scene where he catches the car thief and he says, "This could have gone a lot worse for you." And I'm like, "Okay, so like we are implying that he would murder this man." <laughs> he's um, thinking about it. Uh. I, I enjoy the train scene for Peter's powers kicking in. I like that it's all kind of accidental and haphazard the way he like beats people around with the pole and stuff and he doesn't intend to. It's like plastic, I yeah. do think it's a little weird that we put him in like the man, like we put him in such a weird position where like the guys who fight him are fighting him because they think he's sexually harassing a woman. <laughs> and yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. that's kind of weird that we went that way with it. Like, why do we do that? Why couldn't they have just been not great people or even just casual people but they're like people actually trying to defend a girl <laughs> like and we're like no peter beat them up <laughs> um that's kind of weird uh oh i really like the idea of the spider dangling from the web after the bite i thought mm-hmm. that was good yeah yeah um, oh, yeah. like he pulls it off uh, again, yeah. the, the entire montage of peter not being aware of his powers where he breaks the alarm clock and he's breaking the bathroom and he's just sitting there he's like <gasps> uh, <laughs> i think that's all really good the way his yeah. powers come in um one too many bing google searches in here 
<laughs> Listen, uh, Sony like, Vio, if I look up paid. pictures of spiders, I'll have a deeper understanding of what's happening to me. Listen, everyone's got a Sony phone, a Sony computer. That's just that's the universe, baby. It, I really, his, I really like the first person sequences. His, yeah, like his like idea of doing. I agree. I, his idea of doing like research is to google image search spiders and i'm and i'm like get get out of here <laughs> richard parker spiders connections yeah um i do like the part where peter decides to mess with flash and humiliate him with basketball yeah i think that's uh, good the needle drops in this movie are not as good as the Raimi ones. I will say the same about the second one the song choices are not great definitely and i don't think they fit yeah. the moment yeah um I think the decision not to get uh, not to get Aunt May the 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 decision to have uh, Peter not having picked her up be the thing that triggers the conversation about being responsible was a pretty good choice. Yeah. Uh, rather than like you know the wrestling thing and all that, uh, I thought that was a pretty good way to handle it of Peter being like absent-minded. Um, it, it it's a decent change I think and set up for it. Um, mm -hmm. The the falling into the wrestling building and seeing the mask uh and it being like i know your face i've seen your face i'll find you i'm like this is a bit on the nose <laughs> <laughs> this, this is maybe a little much i think we needed one of those things not both of those things oh that reminds me of something that i really like this movie uh -oh. Oh. oh no did we lose brandon we lost him for a hot second i'm gonna what? guess a thing oh well you we lost you're back lost now, you. now you're back Please continue. go ahead. Try Interesting. It. Where I where did I lose you? Uh, you before you started thing talking, I thought of that I liked. Whoop. Interesting. Okay. Well, I really like the him designing the web shooters and seeing that montage of him designing the web shooters in the suit. I think that's really cool. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I yeah yeah. Oz Oscorp making almost all of it themselves is interesting. I think. It, I mean, fun. sure, it's convenient, but it, it it I don't really need to need much more than like okay i'm just you know i'm taking a pair to watch and I'm putting in the canister i think that's all really really cool sure. and clever stuff sure. and yep. what what he does that i what what this peter parker does that i like is that he, you can see all of his technologies repurposed from other things it's why i also like holland when we first met him in, in civil war mm -hmm. that like the 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 dumpster diver scientist that's that's putting mm -hmm. together all sorts of different things to make something else that's useful for him i think that's all really uh and i like the montage there i think that's all really cool yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, I I do think it's very convenient that the Connors lizard subplot just kind of hits pause to focus on some Spider-Man stuff for a chunk of the movie, and then it's like, whoa, 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 we need to pick that back up. Let's go. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I, I also agree, Brandon. I did like the him. I, anything he's doing when he's being science nerd, it works for me. Mm -hmm. Um I like the idea of Ben's voicemail. I like when he he brings it up and he can't listen to it. And that's something he listens to at the end of the movie. I thought that was really nice. Mm -hmm. That's a theme of this of these two movies are messages that you miss. Um, I wish I wrote that. down more notes. Uh, <laughs> I do like Peter saving the kid. I need to be specific about that. I do like that moment. I like him saving the kid. I like him giving the mask to make him be brave. Mm -hmm. Um I do, I do like all of that. I think that's really good, and and that being the moment where he's like, "I'm Spider Man." I just think that as far as like being a cathartic, thematic conclusion to Peter having spent so much time chasing down the man who shot his uncle, I don't think that it serves the purpose of saying we can close the book on that now. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think I, it's, it, I, I do think it starts the shift in Peter mm -hmm. into being Spider Man, but it doesn't say we're done with that material, and then the movie just decided we were, and I guess that has to be good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do like the scene, and I like that it's another thing that's like showing New York as character, uh, and that dad coming back later with the crane stuff, which the crane the crane shot's like one of my favorite things in the whole film. So. I really like that shot. Uh, the I, whole, I like whole it sequence. too. Yeah. I, it's, one, it's one of my favorite parts of the movie for sure always has been um i, I like when he does movie. the i like when he does the web searching through the sewers i think that's really good yeah yeah i think that's, this that's movie, really smart this you know movie what is I, how i learned that that uh, new york has a really large lizard population yeah i guess so um property of peter parker that's the part that I think is real stupid about that scene is that he sets up a camera to take a picture of the lizard and it says big old property of peter parker on the back and i'm like are you shitting me man mm -hmm. what are you doing what are you doing? That's the lamest way for the lizard to have figured out who he is. P-O-P-P. -P. Um, crappy, crappy, crappy. 
Uh, and it's not even a thing where it's like Doc Ock, where it's like, he's got to go find the photographer for Spider-Man. Like, oh, he just knows he's Spider-Man, I guess, then. Automatically. Like, that's, and I, like I guess that makes sense, because how else would you get a camera up there? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, how else would you web a camera up there in the sewer while yeah. Spider-Man's playing around webs? Unless Spider-Man stole that guy's camera like he steals pizza. That's pizza! <laughs> uh, hey, that I, guy's, the Spider-Man stole that guy's pizza! <laughs> I, I like that Gwen is smart enough that she can be part of the plan and create the antidote. I think yeah. that's really good. Uh, mm -hmm. I do appreciate that. Um, why does the lizard put a coat back on after the high school just to rip it off in the next scene? Who fan knows? Service. Who fan knows? Service. Fan I noticed that too. I'm like, that's not... All right, whatever. I honestly should have kept the coat on the whole time. We see yeah, the coat it, hanging in the, the in the school and then he the next time we see the lizard he has his lab he has coat, coat back on yeah uh -huh. he has a lot of coats guys he he's a scientist that. they only wear lab coats um uh i i think that connor's scene in the sewer where he's like making his final plan for what he's going to do probably would have been better without the voiceover i think the voiceover actually hurts it i think if it, i was just yep. watching him act through the moment it would tell me more about him than and the voiceover the voiceover is scene, just slamming exposition at me in a way that it does doesn't connect and that scene originally didn't have that voiceover so that's a bummer uh i do like the action of peter fighting the cops uh in mm -hmm. the scene when that that happens i think the action is good um, is that where moment, he's like he's like unmasked yes yeah, yeah, yeah. stacy seeing him i think that's really good action mm -hmm. um and I really hate the man with the black hat. The gentleman. I hate him. He comes from Halloween 6, and I hate him. Oh, you know the actor? No, I'm saying there is also a man, a man with a black, black hat. hat Interesting. Who breaks Michael Myers out of prison at the end of episode 6, of yeah. movie 6. Uh, it's basically the same dude serving the same purpose. Yeah, I don't. I I, I like uh, Connor's uh, Connor's uh, end, uh, going to prison and, and all, all that. But the the gentleman shows up. I'm like, mm, I forgot about this guy. Oh man, I was happier when I forgot about this guy. They wanted real a Nick bad. Fury. They wanted a Nick Fury so bad. All right, I, was uh, painless. I I think that the darker and edgier tone that they were going for with the film did it less favors over time than they yes. wanted. Honestly, I, I, upon revisiting this, I feel a lot of the same way I do about Man of Steel. I think there's just choices that they made that were just bad choices for the character that you're trying to represent. Um, I won't say it's as egregious. Well, no, for, I would, for Peter Parker, I, I might. Um, but like, there's definitely a trend of like, make them, make them darker, more, make them more grim. And it was a mistake for Spider-Man. I think it's a mistake for Spider-Man. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have much else to add. I Like I said, I still really like this movie. I think it's a, a, a fun one. Um, should we get into The Amazing Spider-Man 2 then? Let's whip it up, because i got to go to All bed. Right. So The Amazing Spider-Man 2. What do we think about this one, Ben? Funny enough, after re-watching this, I kind of like it a little bit more than I used to. Hmm. Yes, Ben. Yes, Ben. Sparks. I have always liked this movie more than most. I yes. enjoy it. Right. I did not like this movie when I saw it. And now I can confidently say I like this movie now. It's not perfect. It's got lots of bad stuff. But I will always pick a movie that has bigger swings and misses than a movie that's just there. Uh, and I think this movie is such a... F this is such a fun Spider-Man movie. So much fun having Spider-Man in this movie back. It was so great to see so, Spider-Man again. So one of the things I will definitely put this... Hold oh, on, sorry. we got to hear what Brandon has to say. Yeah, Brandon, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, Ben, if you want to go, Ben. Emery, you go first. You, you do your thoughts first. This is, my least, this is my least favorite Spider-Man movie still. And that's fair. That's um, fair. That is, it is most people's. Like, I'm not, I, yeah. I will say, however, I agree that for 45 minutes, this is a pretty great Spider-Man movie. It's fun. It's breezy. Electro's a pretty cool-looking villain, honestly. I like his CGI. Mm -hmm. And then when Electro is defeated, there is no more spider Manning, And that's when I immediately lost interest. I mean, that's... That's, that's the, the end of the movie. No, that's the last half of the movie. And I clocked this, because Electro is, Electro is out 45 minutes into the movie. And then the rest of the movie is Peter oh, Parker dealing with his... You're talking, oh. you're talking when he goes out and goes to 
yeah, gotcha. Right, yeah, it's with, it's all the Roosevelt stuff. That's all the, yeah, yeah. the the Harry Osborne stuff. I don't give a shit, and I was bored out of my mind. Oh yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's start with the beginning right, so, because the beginning. Well, well Ben Ben wanted to say something. I mean, yeah. So I watched these movies back to back very late in the morning or very early in the morning, and when I saw the runtime for Amazing Spider-Man, I was like, oh, great, that's right. Because one of the my problems with it is I felt like this movie dragged. Much oh, shorter than the first one. No, the first this was longer than the first one. Well, the set, the first one's two twenty two. This one's two nineteen. I little had to check a little by a little bit. Hmm. Oh, I, either way, I was still looking at down the barrel of an almost two and a half hour movie, and I was like, "All right, cool." But I was like, "All right, whatever." But I have to watch this. As I was watching it, I didn't feel like it dragged. I mean, yeah, the Roosevelt stuff isn't the best part, but at the same time, I'm like, this is still a, a mystery for Peter about his parents because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm kind of a little intrigued. About about the history about Peter and his dad and why his dad was would do all these. Crazy I don't things. care about that. I mean, I was a little intrigued. I I'll was tell a you what. Bit. I'll tell you what. Um, the stuff that is like bad in this movie, I think it is it is objectively like worse than the first movie. But that first movie, like, it, I don't think it was trying anything big. So like, I found it mostly boring. Whereas like, I'm watching the Roosevelt stuff and I'm watching a giant train rise from the ashes and I'm like, this is so stupid. Oh my god. I can't help but kind of like it. Uh, like, it's so dumb, but at least it's doing something. At least it's doing something. I understand, but it's also, it's boring as shit. Like, I don't, I don't give a shit about shit. any of that storyline. Um, sure. The, the, I, but like, I'll, I'll, look, but we I'll have to have it because I set it up in the first movie. Right. And I say, I hate it. I don't like it in the first movie either. So I don't like it here. And I like it even less here because I like this movie less. Uh, I, I would like this movie a lot more of the Spider Man stuff. That we see in the first before Electro is defeated the first time was more peppered out throughout because I I'm really like guys I was watching that beginning of the movie I was like oh yeah I was completely wrong this is a lot of fun it's very funny it's very charming I'm loving what Andrew Garfield is doing I'm loving the Spider Man stuff and the Electro CGI is great yeah this is fun and then just no the Electro Gone. stuff right? all Sp- he does not suit up again before the final act uh, uh, uh except to tell Harry Osborn to go f himself about his blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm just uh, so bored. That's that's fascinating, because we that's just yeah that's just different different strokes for different folks. Because like I was never bored. I was bored in the first one. This one I was flabbergasted at how bad it was, but like I was still having fun in like that that so bad it's good kind of way. Because like so, something was always new. Something was always like oh my god they're introducing what now? Uh, like I I I had more fun being confused um i i i agree i i don't think any of it's like compelling but like at least it's it's shooting that shot and like i i can grasp onto that instead of just like two teenagers going i don't know i know yeah you know i don't know Uh, i don't know you know like this movie's going for it and like it definitely sucks but like (laughs) i kind of like how much it sucks sparks you look like you want to say something i uh i don't i like uh i don't uh, I would recut this movie and take all of the Richard Parker stuff. Bro, we were talking uh, about like everything, there's everything a cut. With his dad, yeah, uh, doesn't need to be in the movie. It does nothing. Like if you took every moment that's related to his dad out of the film, inconsequential um, it would, plot. It's it's inconsequential to what's going on in the story, and it would not matter. And it does something that I agree with Ryan is one of the dumbest things ever, which it says that Peter Parker is the only person who could be Spider Man because of Richard's blood, which is stupid. This is why I hate um, the parent stuff so much. Uh, well, you're I, absolutely, I, I, you're absolutely right. I would have also, I've thought that way as well. I, I was like, you know, honestly, the, like you take out the Richard Parker stuff because, like, his action scene in the beginning of the movie only makes sense narratively if you keep the scene at the end where he's alive, and they cut that, so they should have cut the other one too. Agreed. That's, like that, that's that, like that, almost, that opening is terrible, and it's almost it's ten minutes, minutes long, man. Jesus. Yeah, yeah it's way too uh, long. No, bad opening is bad. It has awful shaky cam and it means nothing and it's absolutely stupid. And I 100% agree. And uh, and then we and, cut. And then we cut. And then Spider Man's dropping into the city to catch the rhino. The rhino and I'm like, yo. Like, <laughs> Look, going going thing. back here's... to, again, I love the CGI and the swinging choreography in both these movies. Uh, this is my favorite live action Spider Man suit. Uh huh. Um, some of my top live action Spider Man moments ever the are in this movie. Agreed. Uh, it, it has just some of my favorite things. I think Andrew Garfield is even better in this movie. I think he's all the more comfortable. I think he has nailed something that Tobey Maguire never got good at or comfortable with. And that Holland it has it, but I think Garfield has it better, um, which is that he knows how to be expressive when in the suit. Mm-hmm. 
which Toby Maguire, when he's in the suit, having really thought about it in comparison, like he's so stiff. Oh yeah. He's yeah. so stiff when he's talking as he's Spider-Man. Like, and Garfield gets like, I need to be expressive. I need to move my arms. I need to like convey how I feel because you can't see my face. And he gets that. Um, and it works. It works really well. I a hundred percent agree with that. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't disagree that the, I don't think all of the Harry Osborn stuff is bad. I think some of it is fine. I think most of it that's him heading in towards being the goblin is bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think him coming back and Peter coming to check on him after he hears on the news, his dad is dead. Fine. Mm-hmm. Totally fine. I'm playing that like they were old boyfriends. Uh, I think I think that idea of of Dane DeHaan c- getting to come in and be this Harry Osborn, that new Peter, and th- that relationship be fleshed out for them is fine. I would have been cool with exploring it. I just think making him Goblin in this movie was a mistake. Yeah, 100%. it should have been. It should have been set up. Yeah, like I don't like. I agree. Like I don't think all the Harry stuff is great, but also there's some stuff no, that I do but, like. Yeah, but that's what I was. That's what I was talking about. Like I like the stuff in the beginning because a lot of the stuff, the good stuff, I think with Harry is before Electro is taken down. Like I'm telling you, like Electro being taken down is like a is like a is like a, a moment in the movie that fundamentally changes what movie you're watching. Um, sure, but then we don't get Doctor Kafka and that guy rules. And then we don't get the breakout, and then we don't get the scene where Harry goes to Electro. I do, like, I, I do need like you, and that's that's really good scene between them. I do <laughs> like the Doctor Kafka bullshit um, with Electro. I am an evil Nazi. Are you ready to be punished? <laughs> and so, like, so going back to like the Harry Osborn stuff real quick before we move on, it's just like I I I like the early stuff with Harry Osborn, him showing up and having that relationship with Peter and having them talk about it um into that stuff and but the stuff where he's just like so desperate not to not to die in 60 years Mm -hmm. where he's just constantly trying like that stuff does not the the lead up to the goblin just doesn't work narratively in this movie yeah some something that bothered me about amazing spider-man one and like it comes up in this movie it does eventually get there but i'm like because they were clearly pulling from ultimate Mm spider-man with these movies um is that it bothered me that they didn't put two someone didn't put two and two together much faster about Peter was clearly bit by a spider and became Spider-Man. Like yeah. Spider-Man's clearly an Oscorp creation and like Norman Osborn wanting to, to chase that down and get that caught. Yeah. And like, I think it would have improved the first film to have had him put pressure on Connors and the team to make sure that they caught Spider-Man. So the lizard would be motivated just to catch Spider-Man. Um, and this one, like that, that wasn't a high priority already. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- I think would have moved things along a lot better, but you know we do we do kind of get there. It's it's not great, but you know who I love? I love Paul Giamatti <laughs> <laughs> because the man had milk toast dialogue and made choices. It was his choice. It was his choice to play the character this way because yes, the script is not great, and he's like, well, can I just do whatever I want? Can I be a crazy Russian man? Hell yeah! Scream! I am the Rhino. Do it. So yeah, good. love it. I, I love. I have- I have warmed up to that that performance. Yeah. Uh, like again, like Sp- Spider Man could be many different things, right? But like, I I just don't want a dark and grim Spider Man. So when you open your movie, like not the parent stuff. When you open your movie with a silly Russian supervillain and Spider Man comes swinging in, it's you know like, what ticks me yeah, off about that? Good. You know what ticks me off about that is is so st- it's so stupid that that parent stuff is still in that movie because the movie ends with the Spider Man logo showing up on the screen. Yeah, and so it's meant to be like, hey, remember when the movie started with the Spider-Man logo and we zoomed and we went into the, like that's how the movie should Man, start. Brandon, Look, I I'm guarantee I'm you, you right. that was the original thing, and then they put that scene before it. Or I'm telling you, have. I'm telling you right now, I'm definitely making my own editor's cut that that takes out the Richard Parker Dude, stuff. Like, I'm sure it's a better movie. Mid mid movie, sure we were like, we were talking about making that edit, and I'm like, there's a good movie here. There's such a good movie. That's how I feel about all of. That's how I feel about all of Orsi and Kurtzman's scripts. There's a good movie here. It's just they're not good at doing it. Yeah, and they're not is... the only ones who were working on this script, but like, yeah, yeah their 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 dirty fingerprints are definitely on it. It's definitely um, this, this has all their trappings. If you watch all their movies, this is this has got all of them. Uh, but it, it, besides that, like, I do think this has some of the strongest stuff. Um, like I I like Max. I think that the problem with Max, and it really stands out to me now. Um, I think if Max were white, we would like it much better because he'd be a, an incel, a white incel. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. doesn't work 
because it's Jamie Fox. Jamie, yeah, the J- not, Jamie Fox is not cool. Bringing, like Jamie Fox is bringing an a game, but he's he doesn't have that white privilege to inform on the type of character that he's basically written to be a person who is creating the narrative of how everything bad is ha- is done to him and how he's very special. If he were a white incel character, perfect. Yeah, make, frankly, yeah. frankly, perfect. I, I really uh, I, I want to bounce off of that with something positive that I like about Electro. Um, I really like his lightning strikes. I think are really cool. Um, the CGI in these movies continue to be great. Some of the best uh, that we've seen. Uh, and when he shoots his lightning, like there's an after image that stays for mm-hmm. a second. And I think all that like connection to detail is really cool. That and also uh, the Times Square action sequence rules. Yeah. It's it's great. It's great. I love yeah. I love the dumb score. I love uh, the ha- Hans Zimmer having worked with um, the Magnificent uh, Six, Ken- Kendrick Lamar, and um, the Magnificent Six to create a rap narrative of his inner dialogue uh, that is running throughout. That makes it feel like you're getting an insight into the voices of his own head. <laughs> he hates it us. We trade us. I I think it's so <laughs> stupid, but I yeah, love yeah. it. I yeah, love it so much. It's it's a absolutely a choice. Way. It's definitely a choice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I love that. Like the music incorporates Electro's powers into the music. That like part of the music is the sound of what his lightning does. Yeah. Um. I yeah. I I agree. Like I I I think Jamie Fox. I think that character would work in a different movie. Um. Like as much as I like. Like Spider Man No Way Home. Like Spider Man No Way Home. I'm not gonna let you take this from me. Uh, good segue, Brandon. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I think I think it is definitely more in line of the villain that I would want for a Spider Man movie. Um, it is so over the top. Like it's just the thing that I don't that I end up not liking about Electro. And actually, Sparks, you made a good point. Uh, uh to counter it. Um, once once Electro becomes Doctor Manhattan, there should be no more problems against Spider Man. That dude's a god. But yeah. the fact that he is a like a like, kind of like a simple minded dude, like a regular guy, makes him like he doesn't know how to utilize that power. I still think like that dude can do whatever he wants, and Spider Man is like beating his ass, and I'm like, man, he's, he's the he can do whatever he wants, and he's the only villain that spy, that this Spider Man has killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. yeah, this is true. Interesting, yeah. right? Because he... uh, Tobey Maguire on, didn't only didn't kill Sandman, yeah, and yeah, yeah. He, and Andrew Garfield has only killed Electro. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that. Well, technically, Toby didn't I mean, kill them. Yeah, right. No, they they killed themselves. Yeah. Don't tell Harry. Yeah, I think well, he... he killed Venom. Oh, he no, definitely he definitely, definitely he... killed Venom. But, but is bomb. Venom a person? Yes, it's a thing. It's not, a sentient not Eddie. Life. Is Venom the symbiote like a yes. person? Yes. Okay, stop. In Spider Man Three, the movie, oh, oh, as you no, see no, it, no, no, is no, no. Venom a person? No, no, no. It is sentient though. It search it searches for Peter and Eddie. It is a living thing. It's it's a living thing, but like it's a it's. it's I get I a... get what you're doing. I know what you're doing, but my moral. That's like killing good... a rabid animal. Yeah, I wouldn't do that either. I wouldn't. And of, do course, that. and of course, Eddie ran into the explosion, so he just, no, he he just wanted because Peter just wanted to off Venom. He just oh, yeah. he just wanted off the symbiote. He didn't want to off Eddie. Eddie was like, yeet. Uh, anyway. I love I love even though like I don't like the like making Doctor of Manhattan Electro like I love the design for him. Um. I don't like the goblin design. Not at all. No, I also really like um, the... I don't want to talk about the goblin design yet. I also really like the the action scene at the end with Electro. Um, and Accord of Digital did a thing about it that where they're like, this doesn't work. I was like, you're wrong. Like, I don't... I I think this actually... I get... Like, there, there was a point where, like, the movie went back to the movie that I really liked, where it was, like, Andrew Garfield fighting Electro. I was like, this is cool. I yeah, really yeah. like I really like the visuals in this action sequence. It is, uh, it, it, is, it, is fantastic. it obeys one of your favorite rules, Brandon. It is a night action scene where you can see everything. Absolutely. It's true. You can it see is... absolutely everything. That's how you do it, baby. Oh, looks yeah. so good. That suit looks so good, guys. Oh, my uh, God. I really is... like the Spider-Man suit. Uh, oh, a fun fact. So, Brandon, you have Spider-Man for the PS5. They have mm-hmm. added... Uh, uh, no way home suits, but also that amazing Spider Man suit is is, is on, all up in there. It's so good. Yeah, I know. I really want to play it again. It's real good. Um, yeah, I love. I I adore the suit in this movie. Yeah, no, the suit looks good. Also, I love the scene in Times Square where yeah. we where we see Electro, and even like we were talking about it earlier about how like Sparks was saying about how they made that little rap is like they betrayed us and whatever. I actually kind of <laughs> like that because the first few times I did see this movie in theaters. I didn't. I couldn't understand what the heck they were saying. I don't know why, but I just couldn't understand what was going on. And I was gonna make this point with, or I was gonna talk about this in the in the first one 
Whereas the first one where we hear like the, the creepy, the voices coming from uh, Kirk Connors, I felt like that, that didn't really make sense. Whereas in this one, um, this one, I feel it hit a lot more hit hits better because you see Max, like, uh, I mean, yes, he's obsessing over Spider-Man, but then you see him in his brain, like that quick little second when he's talking to um, that one actor from the office where he like, Goes up in his face and like is like you don't there. And then it's a cut that that just happens. Alistair Smythe. Alistair Smythe, the Spider BJ Slayer. Novak, BJ Novak playing that guy. Yeah, BJ Novak. Uh, yeah, I you. love that. I love that internal bit where he's like, "You don't know Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> he's the Libra. You're a Virgo." <laughs> yeah, that that line destroyed me. He's like, <laughs> "He's a Libra. Give me a break." There's a yeah. there's a bit in the Times Square scene where. Uh, Jamie fought where like, like, Claire Trow is like, you don't remember me, and he's like, oh no, I know this, I know this. Is it Max? Yeah, of course I remember you, Max. You're my eyes, You're and, my ears. eyes like, and ears. My eyes and ears. I love Peter talking him down. I love that yeah. like it would work too, except the cops shoot him. Yeah, uh, of course. When but, like Peter, Peter trying to defuse the situation, I think is real solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I love this scene, and also I believe max turning into electro more and him embracing his villain side because yeah they shot him because to him spider-man is like the he puts him on a pedestal he puts spider-man on a pedestal and the fact that the cops still shoot him even though he's trying to like spider-man's like hey i'm trying to help my guy and he's like hey i told it hey guys this is my boy don't hurt him and then he gets betrayed by that and then of course it just it's a snowball and he becomes the villain he's unfortunately destined to be this, uh, I it's really his birthday really... he's gonna light his candles <laughs> there's also a, a secret that sparks really enjoys the scene where he helps the little kid from being bullied uh okay i love his whole saving people montage i love uh i love the whole bit of him like being tired but he still goes out and do it he's sick at a convenience store I'm still Spider-Man. Gets, like, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> like, I love all that, but yes, helping the kid in particular, being like, this is a wind turbine. You made this? God damn it. Like, this is such good Spider-Man. There's so much good Spider-Man in this movie. Uh, also has one of my favorite, one of my favorite Stan Lee cameos that I totally forgot. Hey, I think I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, yes, the scene, that's a great the scene um, when he's when he's putting out the, the electricity with fire, or he puts out Electra with, with a fire hose. And then there's like a so bunch of firemen, fire and he's like, "Big John, little John, good working with you again." And like yeah, he's yeah. got a rapport with a fireman. Like that's yes. Spider Man, baby. I love that. Um, so I I like the, the comedy scenes in this, like when he's doing, trying to do the battery experiments, and then he has like the fire screen and just goes. <laughs> Yes, oh, I, I I'm it. always a sucker for for that gag. That gag happens yeah. a lot, and I'm always yeah, yeah. into it. Yeah, I mean, too. Uh, and also, I, I love, I love... specifically because you brought that up, and I just love that you get this whole sequence of him trying to design webs that will work against Electro, and and the way he's trying to craft that, um, especially at all like capitalizing with uh, him having stayed up too late, and he tries to whip his phone, but he instead whips the wrench and hits himself right in the face. <laughs> also, another thing, I love how his ringtone is the the original uh-huh. Spider- Yeah, I love that. I love it when, um, I love it when, when films and TV shows, they do hom- homages to classic tunes and classic little jingles and like that. That's I'm a sucker for that kind Great. of thing. That's that's also one of my favorite lines. It's just the Peter, where are you right now? Uh, first at Broadway, second at Broadway, third at Broadway. He's <laughs> on the road of the car. There's a there's 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 an, there's a line that I I I almost died at where it's like Peter, what what's wrong? Why do you look so dirty? I was cleaning the chimney. You don't have a chimney. What? what? <laughs> oh yeah 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 great i, great I died I love, I love sally fields playing an aunt may who definitely knows he's spider-man but mm-hmm. just isn't make telling him is waiting for peter to tell her mm-hmm. but like i love that that's the vibe you can see the moment in the first one where she puts two and two together mm-hmm. and i'm glad that they've just played that since then last like, time you so, last, so last time we did laundry you turned everything blue all right, laundry. Share. I was watching. I was watching the flag. I was watching the flag. We don't. Wait, nobody nobody watches the flag. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like this movie. It's so much fun. We had oh, yeah. so many good like lines and good and bits. Like, again, I love all the comedy, and the comedy just stops after Electro is gone. So one of my favorite scenes in this movie is the scene where Aunt May finds Peter's string theory thing about his dad and hmm. and Trump, like that whole board, and she's sitting there. And she's breaking down because she's like, no, you're my boy. Mm-hmm. You're my mm-hmm. boy. Because I like that scene, too. I, lo- I love that scene because when you're with – because even though that she's – I mean, they are blood-related, 
but only to a certain degree. And to, and since she raised Peter, this is definitely like a it's um like nurture versus nature sort of thing. Like yeah, his blood parent, his like real parents left, but she took upon herself to raise this kid, and she grew such so, she so attached to him and. I always like I, I always feel for Sally Fields does an amazing job, especially when she says you're my it's like, no, your parents left. I was here. Yeah. I raised you. You're my boy. It's, that's a terrific scene for both those for both those uh, actors and characters. Yeah. Because like mm -hmm. Peter retorts like I this isn't what this is about me. Like you are my mother. Like, but it's not about that. I just need to know for closure. Like you are yeah. my mom. Like, don't 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 get it stressed. Like, I'm not trying to replace you. Like, that is such a real moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Like going even going back to the to the first Rainy Spider Man movie where where Goblin's like, I've been like a father. He's like, I had a father. His name was Ben Parker. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's like good God take me back. Man. Yeah. Um, back so yeah I, love, I love that scene. Actually credit to every single actors uh, actor who's played aunt may i always sure. they played such a really great aunt may be it um, rosemary harris be it sally field and even marissa tomei i mean marissa yeah. tomei hasn't had a lot of to shine as aunt may in the mcu films but i still feel that she cares like she i love it how she wasn't on screen but in, well the, besides that but when she packs peter's uh, spider-man suit for his europe trip and it says it was a summer fling <laughs> John Favreau being totally in love with Aunt May and Aunt May being like, no, it's just a summer fling. Don't worry about yeah. it. So, or even, um, so rude. Yeah, or even when, uh, uh, what should we call it? Even in uh, Homecoming where it's like, hey, May, hope you're wearing something skippy. And then like, Pierre's like, oh, Tony no, no. <laughs> no, totally um, Stark. Um, all right. Um, yeah, um, Goblin. Let's talk about Goblin. Way, way too fast. Such a such a terrible yeah, idea. Yeah. And I, a terrible I, design. I, I, Oh. There's a there was a there's a point where they they set up like the goblin glider and the suit, but it's the ultimate universe, right? So like he's turning into a goblin and he takes the serum and he starts transforming. So I think that's he's gonna turn into the ultimate goblin, but he just goes into the suit and we just does another. Goblin well, at the end it's glider. like at the end it's like he does, he put, go, puts on the suit and then like he turns in, back into the Dane Dehan and he's just like oh it comes and goes, um oh, like this Jekyll and Hyde thing. Like he's a, and, yeah, and, and like. The, the 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 hall of easter eggs uh is a, such a dumb idea yeah i don't like that but going to because grayson quite a while ago said uh the harry going goblin stuff gave me spider-man three venom vibes and i was not a huge fan yeah 100%. very much the same issue very much the same issue um, yeah and it's like it's, it's very shoehorned into the film and it didn't need to be there and it's bad i do like the tension when he lands there and Peter and Gwen are on either side of him and you can feel like them both being like, Oh shit. And he's like, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. And then, and then he's like, Gwen run Gwen shit. Like, uh, I, I think that's really good. We did, uh, by jumping to this moment, um, one of my favorite shots and I think it worked effectively. Well, I do. I think that they did the Dennis Leary stuff pretty well in this movie. Uh, when he does see him, which is just the two times in the opening, which is pretty close to that graduation moment. And then he doesn't see him anymore. Mm -hmm. But then the moment when Gwen is going in to help with the electrical stuff and he turns back to face Electro and there's there's Captain Stacy staring oh, yeah. at him, just mm -hmm. like fucked up, Peter. You know uh, what that is? You know and, what and that then Electro comes, And then Electro comes through him and I'm like, what a shot. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit. You know what that reminded me of? Um, because I said I said a lot of like Orsi and Christmas trappings are in this movie. Um, uh, historically, I do not like most of their movies, um, but there's one thing that we all agreed in Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen that ended up being pretty good, and it's the relationship between the dad and Sam in the last fight sequence when he's just when the dad all of a sudden can't let go mm -hmm. and is like, "No, you're my boy," and that's what that reminded me of that kind of like emotional resonant moment that like they have proven that they can sometimes just hit at the end. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that, that was set up. That works. This is that, yeah. that was a good well, emotional moment. While, yeah. while I think it was too soon to kill Gwen, even though now this is the last movie, like it, I think it was a bad idea to kill Gwen in this movie. Me too. Um, I do think that that like that that foreboding moment of like fate is coming and him turning and seeing Captain Stacy like that is so artfully well done. Um, yeah. I really love it. Um, and I think outside of the web turning into a hand, I do think Gwen's no. death is filmed very well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's a strong sequence. I just think it's in the wrong movie. Just, just yeah, I was, I was going to say that's actually one of my... I, I don't like the part because 
obviously we know from the comics and we see once the second we see goblin Gwen says like oh so she's dying but i love when peter does the web and the web turns into the hand and besides i that, hate that no, so much. i i don't like it i, like I hate it. that so much i, I, like I just I, I, ben, I Gwen Stacy. I I love that you like it. Gwen <laughs> Stacy's death scene disgusts me in this movie. Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna use a really harsh word because it, it it feels like that. Like the the the, the it's shot fine, but like the the hand thing and the like they're trying to do like the melodrama the melodramatic thing and then she her the way she dies feels very similar to how um whoa Jonathan Kent dies in Man of Steel. Like it's something like it takes away the impact of the comic book death. By trying to make it like something that but that's, that's the, not... exact, the exact no she, she doesn't she she breaks her neck when Spider Man catches her and this she slams her head on the ground well, I mean, and that's not, how she dies it's not and I I similar. so it, it's not Peter's fault anymore um and I I I don't care for the force of it the the look of it and then just the blood drip down the down the trying to like make this whole death sequence that's supposed to be like gruesome beautiful in a way and i just it doesn't work for me on any level i'll disagree Whew, wow you you like made the comparison to the jonathan Kent death scene and i just i don't feel the same i feel like that is a way more atrocious like uh mishandling than this is but um okay Maybe not on the same level. Like, I don't mean to say, like, the, you know, very much in the same way that we compare The Maze of Spider Man 1 to a far worse movie. Um, you know, it, well, it doesn't I think, I think that the quality wise. I, I think the context of it and being in the comics of, like, is this still Peter's fault is, like, even if it's not Peter's fault in the sense of her actual physical death, it's Peter's fault because Peter didn't stay away like he said he would. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that's the larger uh, intent behind it. I don't mind that. Um, yeah, I don't mind that. That's fine. Like, I don't mean to like attack your interest in this movie. I just that sequence. That sequence is just it. It. It's they're trying to be this beautiful death scene, and uh, to me, it's it's just morbidly gruesome in a way that I just don't think the movie wants it to be, uh, and I just can't get over that. That's interesting. Uh, it's not the first time you brought that up around me, and I just I don't see that gruesomeness that you're referring to. I. Yeah, we don't have to dwell on it too much. I, I find it pretty tasteful for how how gruesome the death actually is. Um, it could have been far more severe with like her neck popping out or something, but I think it's tasteful that she's that he doesn't know if she's actually dead, and then the blood is to signify no, she's gone. I think it's mm -hmm. I think it's kind of tasteful. Ben, do you want to pull up Grayson's? Yeah, yeah. So Grayson said, um, I didn't understand why he shot the web there. He's had enough experience with Spider-Man to know what could happen. This didn't make sense. Mm. Well, they set it up in the first film a, a little bit when she, because he catches her in the same way in the first film that he's like, oh, this is okay. I can, I can catch her this way and it, and, and she'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, first, like... that first sequence like gave me a heart attack the first time I saw it in the first movie when she, when he throws him at the school and she like catches her and like you see the neck slap back. I was like, oh, no. Mm. Uh, it, I guess I don't understand what the alternative is supposed to be, like just not saving her. Just go, oh, there she goes. Uh, well, no, I think he, I think on Grayson's level, I think he's suggesting that he could have that he could have made it and to catch her without even shooting the web, or or at least I don't know if I agree with that. I'm just trying to to, dec no, to sure. decode I, what he says. No, I get that. Like I don't know. There was a lot of rubble and shit. Like I think no. Like, well, even yeah. past that, like she was falling so much further already by yeah, the time the that he was able to move. Like, no, that's what I mean. You need the web. That's the only way he could possibly get her. I think. I think yeah. it's too far gone. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to dwell on this anymore. Yeah. Either, either Finish way. Finish it. Finish it. Um, either way, um, like when we find, so I was starting like, oh yeah, here's the line down, like him going constantly into Gwen's grave and hearing about a bunch of the crime take for, and like, oh, maybe we should have Spider-Man and seeing the kid that he saved with the turbine go out to mm. fight the rhino. It's like ballsy and then when we say um one of my favorites one of my favorite moments man. yeah and then when like when he even calls again like hey spider-man and i actually like the ending where he's fighting the where he's fighting the rhino and paul giamatti and i like I how this movie like ends I, I really dig that part yes yes ryan you are the i am the rhino i i love that it's the ending and i love that it's uh, the opening because it's it's one of my things i've always wanted a spider-man movie to do which is open with one of in the, the lesser, like C, C B list villains uh already in action with spider-man 
and just take care of them in the beginning, like get us into that like good, yeah, Spider Man action opening. Uh, Absolutely, and, and I'm glad that this movie finally did it. Yeah, uh, I also agree a, with that. A, a movie needed to. Um, I love when he's in the truck with the radioactive material and he's grabbing all the tubes with his feet and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and the one gets away, and he's like, "Come on!" <laughs> <laughs> I think I think all that's so good. Uh, He's Garfield's just got such good energy as Spider Man in this one, as yeah. Peter as well. But like as Spider Man, like he's just he's just rocking it in every scene. Like you can feel how much he loves doing this as Spider Man. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love his energy with Max when he saves him. I think that his whole vibe with him is really good. I think it establishes that relationship really well very quickly, and what Max extrapolates on later. Um. It, I think there there's a great reference to Uncle Ben uh, at the graduation when uh, uh, May tries to quote him and he's like, that's Ralph Waldo Emerson. And she's like, Uncle Ben said that was him. He came up with that. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, good. oh, God damn it, Ben. <laughs> like, I thought that funny... was really good. Yeah. Um, uh, Peter's guilt over Gwen's dad is not the worst. I'm glad it's addressed in this movie, but um, forcing the rela relationship tension uh, of of stuff is like okay that, i guess that's one of those things that i don't really like about this movie like even in the stuff that of like the movie that i'm enjoying um the the gwen state like they break up and it doesn't really matter to the plot of the movie because they're back together five minutes later not yeah really, we're, we're exaggerating yeah. no, no but, like, you're right though yeah but they right. they don't um and, and then like from then on it's not like the, the tension should have always been i'm going to london for the summer not okay. let's break up and then get back together and then the London thing. Sure. I think like it's I think it is also at the same time very Peter Parker for him to just constantly keep breaking up and then being like but I wanna I wanna <laughs> be with her. And then it is like, it is oh, like I a can't. very like responsibility. A, <laughs> like, like a very so like perfect. young teenage like angsty thing so yeah yeah that's right and i love that i love that it's her being like you have done this to me so many times like i'm i'm breaking up with you i think the fact that like we catch it at that tail end makes me like it a little more mm -hmm. rather than it being like a constant thing we're doing throughout this movie um i think gwen has a really great line of i love peter parker more um i also think that Gwen has a great line when she just yells out peter when yes, I think that's, a great bit. that's a great bit uh when she shouts peter and then <laughs> yeah, yeah i thought that was really good um Oh, I like uh, her, I like I like the when Gwen shows up uh, at the end fight, and Peter is like, "Are you serious? You actually came? You're gonna die? Are you crazy?" He's like, mm -hmm. "I can help you, you idiot." And yes, she can help him, but also she's gonna die. <laughs> so I, I, like, uh, I mean, there's a version of that script where she doesn't need to help him. Yeah, it's true, but it's but it's one of the things I like is is that Gwen is capable of doing those things. I like that in the first one, and I like the movie it here. Should have ended uh, with without the goblin to, showing up. It just didn't have to kill her. Yeah, yeah. I I th I, th I, <laughs> I don't. I think she proved that proves her useless. That's stupid. Um, I think she has more to do in the first film than she does in this film. This film, they give her a lot of uh stuff that's just kind of let's get her involved in action somehow. Whereas in the first film, there's a reason why she's involved in the action with like the creating of the antidote and whatnot. I mean, she's the whole person who finds out that Oscorp is burying Max Dillon and that makes the connection that that's the person because she knows he worked there and all that. And I don't think that's nothing. No, I won't. I won't disagree with that. Uh, the, as far, but like, I, I think that's the exception, not the rule. Yeah, but you know, I, mean, I think but... for the most part, she's not really doing a whole lot of necessary things in the movie outside of that. I like that moment. You're right. It's a good moment. It's just before and after that. There's not really a reason why she should just, be involved in the action. But it's not just one the... moment. It's like a thing she's doing progressively throughout scenes in the film because she makes the connection with Peter. That's Max. I saw him at Oscorp. Does the research. Gets the copy of the file. Gets it out. Ends up she, getting it to Harry she Osborne. Overloads That's how Harry thing. Osborne finds yeah. out about it. All right. Well, I'm wrong then. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, like, I don't think it's just a single moment. I do think it's like a progressive thing she's doing throughout the film. And when she's not doing that, I heard she's you. doing this, having a relationship with Peter. Okay, that's me shutting up then. I'll move on to another thing. Uh, I like the montage, uh, but I think one of the smarter script writing bits about it is when Max is included in the montage as part of the radio thing, talking about Spider Man doing all that stuff. And then they get a call in and it's Max. And he's like, Yeah, Spider Man's like a really cool guy. I kind of know him. <laughs> and, stuff. and I'm like, It's just background stuff, but it's like, it is filling in that character. And I think mm -hmm. that's nice, even if that character is goofy as shit. Um, mm, 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 mm. I agree with that. Mm, mm, 
We covered that. We covered that. Oh, let's talk about let's talk about Felicia. Mm. Oh right, she's in this movie. <laughs> what the crap? <laughs> Uh, so there was another setup that this another guy, another character that doesn't need to be in this movie. That's yeah, just stupid. Could have been literally anybody, just a secretary lady. Well, yeah. they do. They also cut her part down significantly, just like they did with MJ. Although yeah, with MJ, sure. they cut her out of the movie altogether, and arguably they should have done the same for her. True. Yeah. 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 After definitely after watching this movie, I was like, you know, Felicia should not have been in this movie at all. It would just been it would have been fine without her. I have found yeah. those scenes with MJ don't actually exist on the like the physical media releases. I would have liked really? to have seen them at least. Yeah, eh. yeah. Because I like the idea of Shanley Woodley as MJ. I guess, I guess. All right, um, just to see him. No, sure. They put uh, the they put the alternate ending with Richard Parker on the on the on the Blu-ray. Like I, like I'd rather see I, I the think, MJ stuff. I think the reason they specifically didn't do that, Brandon, because I think she was going to be in the third one, and they didn't mm-hmm. want, and they wanted to do a fresh like opening with her, then opposed to. I'm sure that's why they did it. Yeah. Um, I just you know future. Home based home video releases would have benefited from that. I, no, sure. I, I would have liked to have seen that scene. Is what I'm saying. I get you. Yeah, yeah. just not in the context uh, of the movie. Yeah, I think Felicia Hardy is just out of place entirely. Um, Felicity Jones is fine. She has like what um, three lines in the movie? Yeah, she's. They, I forgot she was even in the movie. Uh, I think Dane DeHaan is exceptionally good at being the business side of Harry Osborne. Uh, I think that's where he shines the most is mm-hmm. being like the business guy. This is in the earlier part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Peter mm-hmm. Peter checking in on Harry is pretty good, returning the favor after Harry checked in on him after Big his parents Big stone gone. skipper, that Peter Parker. I like they, it. Big, big time. They definitely, Peter Parker, at this point, Andrew Garfield really wanted uh, MJ to be played by a uh, guy because uh, he really wanted a bisexual Peter Parker. And I firmly believe uh, he played. He and Dane DeHaan made the decision to play them as former uh, boyfriends. I guess because I feel that t- I feel like that that, that. it feels very similar to uh, Too Fast, Too Furious with uh, Tyrese and Walker. I recently rewatched that movie, and I would disagree. But I see what you're saying. I I'm 100 percent for it. I don't think there's enough there for me to transcribe to that substack. I mean, it's all subtext. I would probably have to watch it again and look for it. Um, you don't have I, to. Huh? You don't have to. Oh, no. I mean, like, I like watching this movie, so it's not a chore to me. Um, I like Max's reaction to seeing himself all over Times Square, uh, see, given see his me. origin, where people finally see me. I think that's actually really good. I, I like that they use Times Square for that. I think that's mm-hmm. really great. Uh, this was the most expensive movie ever filmed in New York City because it's obviously very expensive to film in big cities. That's why they don't do that anymore. That's that uh, that. It's also really yeah. hard to film in Times Square, mm-hmm. but but so worth it. It looks great in this movie. It's one of the best parts. Um, that's why it's that's why it's at night because they had to film at like two a.m. Yeah, yeah. When, yeah. when he saves the people on the stairs, that whole sequence I think is great. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the, um, the the web the web going back with the web trick. Yeah, uh-huh. I really like how they visualize his spidey sense. I agree. Mm-hmm. I think I, that worked really really well. Uh, really bad needle drop with for you, and why is Peter doing all this board building stuff after fighting Electro? It makes no sense. Anyway, um, yeah, man, that that for you, I will never forget that song for as long as I live. <laughs> I could, oh, uh, I did. Peter, I forgot it until I saw this movie again. Uh, I I really like the part where Peter distracts the Oscorp guards so that Gwen can get right. away, mm-hmm. and he's just oh, whoa, whoa, the coffee, oh, oh, yeah, my bad. Mm-hmm. And then he like does a little skip <laughs> on his way out. That was mostly uh, practical too, which I, I, I learned in a BTS footage. It looks really cool. Uh I love when Electro is in Ravenport and he says, I can feel it in the walls. He's got that I just thought that's a good line delivery. Mm-hmm. Um Ravenport, isn't that where um Ravencroft. Ravencroft, Ravencroft, yeah. And that is where Venom 2 takes place, yes. Okay. There you uh, go. There, Venom Venom in the, the Andrew Garfield averse confirmed. I don't care. Nope. Um, Peter interrupting Gwen on her way to the interview is really good. I love when he just like swings in like haphazardly, hits the wall, and he's like, Gwen! <laughs> like, he's like <laughs> frazzled and freaked out, and he's like talking a mile a minute, and then he realizes where they are with the Oxford thing, and he's like looking around, he's like, where are we? <laughs> What's also, his, his, him webbing the bridge. Yeah. Uh, I, like I, think, I think that's a great bit. Um uh, you need me, I think, is a great trigger phrase for Max when Harry comes to get him. Mm-hmm. Um, Harry just goes unhinged way too fast. Uh, yeah. All 
bleh. Um, I like I, I like the idea. I'm of, fine with murdering people way too quickly. Yeah, I like. I'm cool with with like the goblin being like a disease. Like we're introduced to Norman Osborn. This dude is in his 60s or 70s, and he's dying of it, right? So we're introduced to Harry Osborn, who is 18 at most, and he's immediately starts dying from it. Like mm -hmm. that's just plot making him sicker than he needs to be. Because like I understand what you're doing, but like it sh he should have been safe for the third movie. He can start dying like a year later. Don't introduce sure. him, and he's immediately dying. There's no moment in the script where I should feel when Peter's like, I can't give you my blood. And I should I shouldn't be yelling at the screen going like, why not? Why not you guys experiment on Peter Parker's blood to see if it will save him in 60 years? Yeah, well, you know, he's that's but why we, he's a special DNA boy. Only he can be. Spider but they but they can't because of the special DNA from his dad. Yeah. Uh, Spider man. Some last notes. I like that Gwen is the person who solves the web shooter problem. I like the megaphone bit when they come running up on the cop guy and he Spider -Man. shoots Spider Man at him and it mm -hmm. makes him go, whoa. <laughs> I, uh, real, real quick, Sparks. Like, I, I do also love that moment because, like, Peter Parker is like a genius, but, like, sometimes he'll just not think of something easy, like magnetizing. And, he, and yeah. she's like, So you magnetize, right? It's like, No. Damn it. Like, yeah. it's just really good. Real good. He's got, a, he's got a creative mind. It's always frazzled, it's always everywhere else, but, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. in the moment. Uh, so, I love the shot when Electro's face appears in the building. Yes. As Spider -Man's oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. like, it's like ego, yeah. He's yeah. like, do you see me now, Spider-Man? Yeah, I love that. Um, all the plain stuff is just stupid and unnecessary, and we didn't need it. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, the Was it a 40-second timer? Yeah, something like that. Amazing CGI night fight. Uh, where you can see everything is amazing, and I love it. And uh, itsy bitsy spider moment still works for me. Forget you haters. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I that's the kind of it. dumb. That's the kind of dumb that I was like, yeah, okay, I'm into this. Yeah. That after, that that works for me. After Gwen dies and the seasons pass, and May reaches out to try and console him about grief again, like knowing that he's Spider Man, um, and that that gets him to go back out there. And of course, the ending with the rhino. I like all that part. I think that part's very good. Mm -hmm. I oh, I love the end of the rhino. <clears throat> I desperately wish it wasn't used in the marketing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that right. whole scene's in the marketing. The entire oh, I, end shot is the marketing trailer. Yeah. One hundred percent agree. Because that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way to end the movie. Uh. Yeah. And then the gentleman shows up with uh, at Harry and's like, Let's, yeah, yeah. What are you thinking? What do you think? We're thinking. I'm thinking six. So stupid. I 100 percent agree. 100 percent. It's real bad. Dumb, 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 de dumb, de dumb. You know what's funny? Um, like, I don't even <laughs> mind. Like, like the Sinister Six setup stuff is dumb, but like after the Amazing Spider Man, Spider Man One, like the Amazing Spider Man Two has like you know like the row of like, oh, it's the Vulture and Doctor Ock. I'm like, all right, that's like that's silly setup. It's the man in the hat that really does overdoes it for me. Because it's like, I'm even, and I'm setting up a group. You know what they're called? They might be sinister. I'm like, ah, oh, just murder me, please. I can't. And he works for Oscorp. It's like a shadow guy who works for Oscorp. Yeah. Because he's, he's because Harry's now his boss. Yeah, and like, it's ne they've never said who it was. Like, we're, we're never going to know. Like, just credited as the gentleman. Also, like, something fierce. Gustav he is. That's his name. Oh, that's yeah. right. He is credited as a character name in the second film. But it's but it doesn't mean anything. It's not a real it's not one. Yeah. Yeah. He was clearly going to be the jackal because they were gonna do the clone saga in the third one. Yeah, they were gonna do the clone saga and Dennis Leary was coming back and Gwen was coming back, so like he could it's just weird to make your main overall villain the jackal. That's really an odd an odd choice. Well we're never gonna get there. Never he would have joined the Sinister Six movie directed by Drew Goddard. I would have seen that movie. That would. That and then the uh, the Aunt May spinoff film where she's a spy would have happened. Yep. <clears throat> Young the, Aunt May. The period between the Sony leaks and the Amazing Spider-Man Two was wild. With Sony being like, "We're gonna do an Aunt May solo. We're gonna do a. We're gonna do a, a Venom movie." Though that one happened. Jackpot, but, Black Cat, Silver Sable, all that shit. Yeah, all those, all those guys. And you know, there's a there's a lot of things I enjoy in this movie. But I am grateful that like none of those things came to pass. True. Yeah, I think we live in the better timeline. And yeah. we're getting we're getting another movie, technically. So you know, we my win. my final note: I just don't think Amazing Spider-Man Two is the dumpster fire a lot of people have convinced themselves it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will also agree it is not the dumpster fire I once thought it was. Mm -hmm. I think all yes. of these Spider-Man movies are vindicated. Are I am selfish. I am wrong. <laughs> 
are better are better than than because you know like when you're in a moment like you know you're watching a sequel to a movie in the midst of it like you can get distracted by different thoughts but like time enough away there's good stuff in all of these movies in all five of these spider-man movies that we've watched um and i'm 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 super glad to be here where we are now with the hall and stuff and it's a time enough again where we're like we can revisit these characters and see where they've been and it's like that's really exciting i'm the... I'm really happy that we'll have almost certainly Tobey Maguire in No Way Home, but I'm even more happy for Andrew Garfield because Andrew Garfield was so passionate about Spider-Man. Yes. And no matter what way you slice it, there is an amount of like just feeling like he got done dirty. He did. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um I really like the um I really I really like there's there's an element of this movie that I really like and I totally forgot what it was. I'm so sorry. Whatever. Okay. Guess we'll just move on. Uh, I think this. I think the score, while it is much more over the place, like I think it. I think it is still pretty good. Like I like the electro score. I do like like the reincorporating of the Horner theme. Um, I think the music's pretty pretty good. Yeah, I think I think the movie works better in the. I, I like the I like the music in the first one more, but this is not. This is a pretty good Hans Zimmer score. I I visually like the Spider Man stuff so much. It really it it like it puts pops. the movie up. It makes the movie a whole grade higher than it would be otherwise because oh. all of the Spider Man visuals, everything with him when he's in the suit, whether it's day, whether it's night, whatever he's doing, whether it's a small bit, whether it's a big bit, it all looks so good, mm -hmm. like so good. Uh, and I wish we had a movie where it was just like more of that, just all that, all the time. Um, I, I, I remember what I was going to say. Um, I don't think uh, any of these Spider-Man movies that we've watched, all the five, I don't think any of them are bad. With Time Enough Away, I don't think any of them are bad. I like The, the stuff I don't like in Amazing Spider-Man 2 does bring that movie down to my bottom list, only mm -hmm. because I really like the, the first half. Mm -hmm. I really yeah. like that first half of that movie. Um, and the thing that the reason why it's under Spider-Man three for me is because Spider-Man three still has enough of Raimi's voice where I yes. don't think this one has enough of Webb's voice because Webb was almost drowned out completely by the studio while trying to make this movie. Um, I don't think it, it's as egregious as I once thought, but it, it, I do think it's still prominent how much studio interference was in this movie. Yeah. And I think this goes to show that like we have, we have five, we have seven Spider-Man movies, right? And like, if Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the worst of it, there's still a lot of good Spider-Man stuff in this movie. Yeah. Like, like that, the Spider-Man movies have had a really decent track record, all things considered. Like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, and I, I agree with Sparks. I'm really, I'm mostly happy that we, we are going to get Andrew Garfield back because I always felt bad for him not getting that third movie. Yeah, and even I was definitely, like, younger. Like, I'm still, like, not, like, the biggest fan of, of like, the. I prefer, like, the other two sets of movies to this movie, but, like, that dude rocks, and, like, he deserves as much, like, acclaim and fame and love that the other guys have, and, like, mm -hmm. just because his movies were, might have not be as good doesn't mean he doesn't deserve the, the, the love and stuff. And, again, right. the CGI in this movie is why I don't like the CGI in the Holland movies, so... There's definitely, yeah, if you watch that Corridor Crew uh, special on the Spider-Man movies, definitely, like, the homogenization of the MCU uh, uh, special effects stuff takes away the Spider-Man stuff, because, yeah... The, that's, the, the... that suit, the, <laughs> it's, the suit makes all the difference for me, because the way the, the Holland suit is done is a completely computer-generated moment, but there is still a physical suit that he wears. They just put, put like, this, this CGI, like, mat over it and just yeah, yeah. It, the texture just feels off but with the 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 garfield suit even when it's completely cgi you can still feel like you can feel that latex texture yeah 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 and, um, then, so when so it, and then when you do actually see you because once again you can tell where it runs the cgi suit or it's real suit and because it, it shines it shimmers you can definitely see that that's a real suit I can't and, tell which is CGI in this movie, honestly. It, the suit looks so good in this movie, and I, I can't wait to see him in No Way Home in that suit. Like, I I love the suit. Like, this is my favorite it's the best. It's, it is, man suit for sure. It's so crazy, the drastic... Again, like, his eyes grow, like, three times from Amazing Spider-Man 1 to 2. Like, it's crazy how big those eyes and how white they get. It's just like, man, they went from, like... They really did... The eyes look business. so good. Yeah, I love it's, it is the best live-action suit. It is, like, straight up, that is... That it is so good. It is so good. Yeah, I like the eyes that Tom Holland has in uh, in the, the Civil War one and in uh, Homecoming because you know because yeah because they move because they're more like the comic books. But this suit, as a practical suit, looks so gorgeous. It looks so good. And also, I just love how the, the giant spider logo on this yeah. one. Even the in the Tim McGuire films, there's a huge spider or there's a big spider logo. And this one's huge. And I love it. And poor Tom Holland, he has a tiny little spider. It's like this big. <laughs> 
It's, Hello, it's, baby. Odd. it's a little it's drone baby. that pops up. That is kind of cool. I do like that. I mean, not. I do. I, I do like. It's the not look. the size that counts, Ben. I know. I know. But I, I do like the suit a whole lot. The Amazing Spider-Man Two suit is gorgeous. I'm so glad. That's potentially the suit that he is going to be wearing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm excited. I have such nostalgia for the Raimi suit, so I'm excited to see all of it. Honestly. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Very Brandon good. Grayson just said the exact same thing you did. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ben did make the innuendo. So. I'm I'm really glad y'all y'all feel more good about this movie because I I love I love what's good in this movie. I would There's watch. I would good, watch good stuff. I would honestly watch from the beginning to the first electro fight again. Let's, we heartbeat. will. Sparks I will, and I will make an edit. I'm gonna make you a new cut, baby. <laughs> that will cut out all the bad stuff. It'll be just a Spider-Man movie. It'll open the way the last movie ended, as it should be. It's gonna be beautiful. All right, shall we get into a book club then? Do we? Have nah, to? let's just call it a night. Oh, all I right. mean, yes, absolutely. <laughs>